Good morning guys or afternoon wherever you're from. Um, in this video I'm going to show you a quick update on the Microsoft Flight Sim 2020 connector. I've made some changes where I've changed from using the dot length to determine what is coming in to using a prefix. Well, the prefix is going to solve a lot of our problems and it's going to make it easier to maintain your own code in the future. And just in the previous video when you used the dot length, it could be quite tedious to determine which data you want it where and with the prefix you can just change a value to change which data goes where and this is going to make our lives so much easier so please um, have fun if you have any questions leave them down below and i will get back to you as soon as possible hi guys as i've mentioned earlier in the previous video um, we've used dot length to determine which value was coming in well as you might imagine if we receive 100 values the length of the string would become 100 values and that would mean that our string would get very big for no apparent reason and the data would just get bloated by all kinds of gibberish so we're gonna take a new approach that i've implemented so i'm gonna create a new sketch just to have a clear view of what is changing and what we need is uh, the library again for the let's see sketch include library the liquid crystal i to c and the liquid crystal i to c also needed the arduino.h and the wire.h library included this one should always be underneath the wire.h so i'm just going to copy and paste this because in a previous video i went all over this in detail and this can also be i will also link that video down below just like this code so you can just follow along your own pace and see what i've done in the end so we're going to start by saying, I want to start my LCD. I want to turn on the backlight. I want to start a serial communication listener thing. And we're going to set our timeout again at 50. And this, I already went over this, so I'm going to skip over this part and go directly into the new part in our loop block. So what we used to do is if serial capital S dot available is bigger than zero. So if something is actually coming in, but first we said string input text and we're still gonna need this one. So you can just follow along and say serial dot read string so what this does is if something is coming in read that and assign it to the input text and previously so don't follow along with this we would do int length is input text dot length blah blah yada yada yeah. but we're not going to do that anymore we're going to do string prefix is input text dot substring remember a substring is a way to cut up a string zero till three so zero one and two now why do we take those values well if we look at this column in our documentation and this will also be linked in the comments down below so don't worry we see that every value that's available right now has a prefix so 330 337 580 582 and we can just pick the ones that we'd like. So in this case, let's say I want 580. That's the autopilot heading lock. We go to our codes. And we know that the first three characters have to be 580. So in this case, this would mean that the string that's coming in would be 580 plus the value. So 580. Let's see what our app is giving us for the heading lock. Well, the heading lock is zero, so that would be 5800 that is coming in. If we would receive the active com frequency one, we would receive 900, so the prefix 900, 124850. So that would be one string. And that is why we cut it in our code. So serial does read. And here we cut up the first part to get the prefix. And this would also directly mean that. 
the value that we receive would be the input text dot substring everything after the tree okay now we can create a switch based on the prefix and let's say case what information do we want well we want the active com frequency one let's say 900 we do something with that we just do lcd this is this part is again the same as we did before so we do lcds dot set cursor zero comma zero and what this means is that this first line first character we're going to place our let's just call it this what we have in the editor the flashing line so we do lcd dot print value and in a, in a switch statement, you always have to break after we've done the case, finish the case. So right now, we read the incoming text. We cut up the prefix. We cut up the value. So first part prefix, second part value. Based on the prefix, so if the prefix is 900, set the cursor at the first line, first character, and print that value that we've got up here. And break it now if we would verify this it would give an error because it would say you would need an integer because in this case the value of the prefix is coming in as plain text so it's 333 and not 333 and we need this to actually work in a switch so what we do is we declare an int it's going to be called prefix value it's going to be prefix to int. It's easy as that. So we convert the text value into a workable integer that we're going to pass to the switch statement. And in theory, we could already run this. So if we just hit upload, Okay, that's done. So that is going to port 13. So I rerun this port 13. And we see the value coming in. Now the beauty of this is that we could just decide for ourselves that, okay, I don't want to have that value there. I want 901. Now, same thing, we upload it. I believe the value is the same, so I don't think we're going to see a change. Let's see. And we're going to rerun this so it gets sent again. COM13. Now the game is loading up again. But as we are stuck, so give it a little minute. Here we go. Oh, it's an, actually a different value. So 127850. So this way we could just cherry pick the data we want. So let's say we want on the first line, we want our frequency one active. But what if we, we just copy this, change this to a 901 and we say, I want on the first line, I want the standby frequency. So now we get the active com and the standby frequency and print that on line zero. So the first one. And line one, so the second one. So if you upload this, rerun the app, or we could just change the values, but I think this is faster. Yeah. Now we have two values. And now the beauty of these prefixes is that you yourself can just change this and put in any value you like that is available in documentation at the moment. I will keep expanding this and keep make it eventually more user friendly. Um, so the next step for me actually would also be to create a library that would just say LCD to set. You could create your own function that says, "Okay, I want to have on this place. I want to display this value that would just come from a library, just like we included up here." So you would have to type less code. But me, myself, uh, I will keep all the old versions up as well so nothing breaks. So you can just re-download anything 
if you don't want to change your own code or if you'd like to change your code, I will always support these kind of constructions because in my opinion, uh, I like to do this and not to do it the really easy way. But so I uh, don't worry that anything breaks. Everything will keep on being supported uh, up until a certain point, but just so you know that your code doesn't stop working anytime soon. So we have two values and we're gonna, well, let's pick another one just for the fun. We're gonna do the, whoop, gonna read out the barometric pressure, which is 632. So we go to our code, case 632. Open, let's just do it like this. And we say one of the 10th character at the first line. So once again, we just upload it, case 630. And then we rerun the code. It's at port 13, I believe still. And I have to do a little waiting game. Here we go. And as you might see now the third value comes in at the first line at the 10th character. And just as mentioned before, I just, just want to give you the idea what happens. So if we would just change this value, 5A2. So oh, 5A2. We would get different information, but on the same spot. So if you get the concept, you decide where you want it. And by the prefix, you determine what you want. So if you would rerun this, remember we just, we kept the place the same. We just changed what we want on that place. So we want 900, 901, 582. And if you want something else, you change this to 600. And that's fine as well. Oh, that's not fine because it doesn't exist, but you get a gist of it. 632. So this is just for yourself to make it easier to change the data that you want on which place without having to determine the length and having to work with prefixes. The thing that still needs to be done is in the case of COM1, so this one, we still need to do string part A is, let's see, value dot substring zero till three. And string part B is value dot substring three. So what this does, because the incoming com is one, two, three, four, five, zero. 459, for instance, take the first tree, take the second tree, so part A, part B. And instead of value, we could do print part A plus the dot plus part B. And then you would get the dot in the middle, which is quickly uploaded so you see what I'm talking about. Say 30. Here we go. So you see the difference in the first one. So this one, this is the active frequency. This is the standby. So active 900, standby 901. Here we divided the value again in a part A and a part B. And we've added the dots when we printed it. So you received the 124.850. We could just do exactly the same. Over here, here we go. I'll just change this to a one. We upload it. It's like so, just rerun it. 13. And you, well, we'll just wait for that, but it will come up as with a dot in the middle again. 
So that's actually the biggest change that we've made so far. I hope this will be easier to work with. If anything doesn't work or, if you have any, or you have any questions, please let me know. The documentations and the code used in this video can be found in the comments. So you can just read back everything on your own and how to use it. If you have any suggestions for the, any upcoming features, um, please let me know. And please keep in mind that I'm working on user friendliness and everything else. So that will be coming up later on because this doesn't look that fancy, but it works. And just the same for the Arduino code. I'm trying to implement this into a library so we could even minimize the code needed in our projects even more. So thanks for watching. Please leave a like and subscribe if you liked it. And I hope to see you in my next video.